everyone following in your choir, top act follow. I will try my best. My name is Arjun. I'm also part uh, or an alumni of the Congressional App Challenge. I'm one of those people who competed back in 2015, so it's been a long time. It's like almost half my life at this point. Um, but yeah, now I'm at Apple. But what I'll be presenting to you is work I did during my master's thesis at Stanford. And it's something that we call Policy Dreamer, using AI to imagine policy futures. So, the policy design process is complicated. I don't need to explain that to y'all. Um, especially for emerging technologies, and there's two things that make it tough. First is exploring the design space of what even is possible when it comes to some of these policies. And second, imagine you do have the policy, you know, a lot of these things are untested. And so it's really tough to figure out what futures these policies will live in. And so the motivation for my project was to take inspiration from a lot of other fields that are using AI, and specifically LLMs, to uh, act as kind of creative assistance. And so you're seeing this in domains such as creative writing, software engineering, or what I'm working in right now, AI research, where you know the goal of the AI is not to give you the perfect solution, but instead to give you a couple of options that are reasonable, so you can either pick from one of those or use them as a way to brainstorm. And so that's what Policy Dreamer does. And so how does it work? It's divided into two phases. Phase one is what we call the generative policy phase. Where what you do is you input a domain. I picked a hopefully uncontroversial one here with space mining. Um, don't think it was as considered yet. Uh, and what we do is we take that domain and we go through an iterative process where we generate policies and we then uh, elicit feedback from either real people or simulated people. We'd love to talk about that. And then from that, we get a bunch of uh, potential policy options. But what's really exciting is part two. What we do is we take in uh, one of these policies, any of these policies, a policy you put in, and then what we do is we generate what we call uh, axes of uncertainty. Axes that, you know, we're not quite sure what the future is going to look like. For example, our system here generated a couple axes such as, what is the technological capability going to be in a few years? What is going to be the level of international cooperation when it comes to this issue? Or, you know, what is the degree of space mining that's actually happening? And then what we do is we pick different points along these axes and we create scenarios. So here I, uh, the system came up with one called the unrivaled market, where you have high activity, but uh, low capability and uh, low cooperation. And what we do is we evaluate these policies and come up with reports of what are some of the best and worst case scenarios that could happen. So what's next? Um, I think there's a lot of room, especially from what we've seen from other people today, in integrating congressional data sources to make this uh, more grounded, what Congress is actually considering. Um, we've been trying this with policymakers already to have really interesting results on being able to generate novel policies that we haven't been able to find otherwise. Um, we want to try it with as many people as possible. And then finally, uh, right now, it kind of lives on a computer in a terminal. So it'd be really cool to have a user-friendly interface that you can go in and play around with policies, play around with some of these axes. This is a brainstorming tool. So thank you so much for listening. I have been talking about this all, like all the time for two years, and I'm ready to talk about it for more. So please reach out to me. If you want to learn more or chat about some of this stuff, there's a lot of cool math going behind the scenes that I'd love to nerd out about. So cool. Thank you so much.